So a few years ago, we did a discussion on standard Weinstein strategy, and we backtested that in trading you fine script. Uh, now, there's nothing wrong with backtesting and trading your fine script, but the problem is those backtests are individual level backtests. Uh, so we generally tend to have a certain level of selection bias. So basically, we would backtest it on the stocks individually, but that's not what happens in real life. In real life, uh, we'll be doing our strategy in a portfolio of stocks, and that results can be different. So in order to avoid the selection bias and in order to have a real life scenario of the backtest result, uh, we need to do something called portfolio level backtesting. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a portfolio level backtesting. And in order to achieve that portfolio level backtesting, we can't use trading your point script because they don't have that feature. Uh, so some of the famous platforms that have that feature is Quant Connect and Ami Broker. So this time we will try it in Quant Connect and we'll do almost close to 1,600 odd trades over a plethora of stocks. Uh, and we'll figure out what the result provides and how we can improve the results. And is it good enough uh, to deploy this strategy? So here's a brief summary of standard Weinstein strategy. So the number one is that the stock has to be trading above the 30 week moving average. Uh, the second one will be that it has to be in a tight consolidation kind of a phase. And then it has to break that consolidation with high volume. And once all these conditions are checked, we also have to make sure that the relative strength of this stock move is higher than zero. So relative strength is compared to that of the relative strength of the SPY. So we're taking another um, index ETF to compare with that of the stock. So you can see it's like a, a chain of rules which has to be followed before making entry. So coding this strategy is slightly bit tricky. It's not that simple. Uh, so in trading view, we have done the code here. This is uh, version 5. Uh, you can download it in our uh, from the description box. But if you want a detailed explanation on how the code was done, then I would recommend you to visit that uh, video that we did two years ago. So the Quant Connect code, however, is only available for the Prometheus students. This code uh, is available for free uh, in the download section. So. Uh, our goal right now will be to test this in Quant Connect over a portfolio of stocks or 1,600 trades since 1998 and see whether it works or not. So before that, we need to understand what we are trying to achieve in a portfolio backtest. How, uh, what is the comparative measure? So fundamentally, our comparative measure is the S&P 500 buy and hold. So S&P 500 buy and hold. CAGR is 10% with um, drawdown of 50%. So our goal will be to beat that drawdown, our return to drawdown ratio. Um, so what happens is that for me personally, and also many of the traders and investors out there, they might be able to beat maybe this month or maybe this year, but that does not mean that they will be able to beat it every year. But that's a fundamental goal on average for the next one year or the next 10 years, you should have an average CAGR higher than 10%. Otherwise, there's no point in you uh, doing quantitative trading or any form of investing because you can just move in and do S&P 500 buy and hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of my personal portfolio and how it performed last year. And then I'm also going to show my personal portfolio performance, how it performed the first two months um, of this year and see how it didn't work and also how it worked as well. So what I'll do today is I'll just do um, a recording on the performance of the entirety of 2023. So I'm just going to log in now. Okay, so if I go into the performance tab, um, I blocked some of the things here, just the account uh, name and everything. And this is the performance of the year. This is of uh, 31st of December, 2023. So year to date and one year. Uh, and if I can compare it with the S&P 500 index, uh, the S&P 500 index on December 29th, 29th was Friday, and 30th was Saturday and Sunday was 31st, so first will be Monday. So it was 24.23% and 52% for the portfolio. So if I can compare with other indexes like 
let's say Dow Jones Industrial Average as well. Again, it's uh, it's beaten that index as well. Again, the world total world stock index as well. Again, uh, outperformed that as well. So um, overall, it has been quite a good year. Quite volatile in some some parts, but it's been because of uh, I've discussed this before in a uh, couple of videos, not a couple of videos, I think one video before, uh, basically because of rebalancing my strategies because our mean reverting strategies was performing extremely well during the volatile periods. And then came the trending kind of a period, so then the uh, mean reverting strategy wasn't performing that well. So that comes the rebalancing section. So I normally tend to rebalance at the end of the year, the money allocated to uh, the mean reverting strategies and to the trend following strategies. So now at the moment we are, we are slowly going into the uh, trend following strategy. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to claim that this is like a spectacular returns by any means or anything, but I think it is a good start for the next year. I think I've got some room for error. Uh, I don't know how it's going to be the next year and the year after. If the market is trending, then the opportunity for us to make more money becomes more difficult. Uh, the more volatility, the more quantitative strategies tend to perform well. Going to see the performance currently, that's of 12th of February. I'm just going to log in. Okay, so um, this is the dashboard or the portfolio. So if we can go to performance, which is already click right now. Uh, and if you can see the year to date, my performance has been not that great. It is minus 0.15. Uh, and if I can compare it with the S&P 500, you can see the S&P 500 has beaten me uh, as of 9th of February. And today is just Monday. Uh, the market has just opened, so it's a trading at 5033.74. Um, so this is the problem that every trader or investor faces when uh, he trades, uh, because the goal is fundamentally to beat the S&P 500, but that does not mean that you can beat the S&P 500 every single month or every single year. So just because I was able to beat the S&P 500 return last year, with 52% doesn't mean that I will be able to do the same uh, currently. Uh, and at this month, maybe by the end of the year, I could possibly beat it or not, or maybe it might be the average of the next two or three years when I beat the S&P 500. Uh, so what happens in individual backtests is you only get to test it individually. And that's the whole point of this video. With the portfolio backtest, you get kind of a real life scenario of your portfolio performance over the years with that specific strategy. So you can combine multiple strategies and check their portfolio performance and come to a conclusion that whether this strategy strategy will work or not. Uh, and once your portfolio performance are good, and if it can be the S&P 500 CAGR to drawdown ratio uh, with respect to buy and hold, uh, and then you can go ahead with performing optimization and forward testing on the color simulation and then decide that, okay, I am going to go ahead with this strategy. So unless and until all these things are checked, you can't go ahead uh, with any uh, specific quantitative trading strategy. Uh, so now we're going to go into Quant Connect and discuss our strategy there. So let's start with backtesting the Stan Weinstein strategy in Quant Connect. So what I did is that uh, I would backtest from 1998 with a 10,000. Uh, here's 100,000 capital, but you can put 10,000 or whatever you want. So I'm actually allocating 5% uh, on each position. So we would get roughly 20 positions. Uh, so 20 positions, 5% allocated, and total that will be 100 positions. So each stock will get a 5% allocated to that um, portfolio. So that's portfolio with position sizing. And this back test is what's available, what we could do in Quant Connect, and that's a huge advantage for us because in reality, we will be allocating X amount uh, per position per stock. This cannot be done in Trading View Point Script. Trading View Point Script only lets you do individual based back tests. Now, you can change this portfolio allocation. You can do 90 positions, you can do 50 positions. It's up to you. The more positions you do, uh, the more smoother your equity curve and the more likely uh, your returns are going to be in, in line with your backtest. But the only problem is the returns might not be big enough. 
uh, the drawdowns also will be smaller. But on the other hand, if you reduce your positions, uh, you're taking more risk, but you are more likely going to make bigger returns. But it comes with the cost, and that's a drawdown. So let's go into the results of it. So this is the final result. So from hundred thousand dollars, that was our initial capital. We went all the way to six hundred eighty-eight thousand nine hundred seventy-four dollars. So if you had uh, a ten thousand dollar fund, it would be like sixty-eight thousand dollars. So this is the fees. So in Quant Connect, we can actually put in. It automatically comes with the interactive broker's fee structure. Uh, so that will be the cost that you pay in the commissions. Uh, and if you can look at the chart. We've tested from 1998 because this is by default where the back test starts in Stan Weinstein strategy. Uh, and you can see the drawdowns as well. The drawdowns is pretty high. We'll come to discussion uh, about that in a bit. <clears throat> so these are all the stocks that the market, the back test has been done randomly. It's going in and out, in and out. Remember the 20 positions we're taking at 5% allocated. So it's there are multiple uh, situations where multiple trades are being entered. Uh, but maximum of 20 positions at one time. So if I can go down and I can see the compound annual return, it's 7% and the drawdown is 36%. So this is not that great. So why is this not that great? So I'm just going to take in the calculator here. Um, so ideally, the CAGR of an SPY uh, buy and hold is 10%. And the drawdown for the past uh, 25, 30 or years is like 52% or something. And that came during the uh, great, um, the 2007 financial crisis, 2008, 2009 financial crisis. So 10 divided by 52 is 0 0.19. So this is the CAGR to drawdown ratio, or you can even call it risk adjusted return. Some people do that as well. So ideally when you create strategies, you need to beat this 0 0.19. And this 0 0.19 is significant because if you have a strategy which is better than that, then you can apply that strategy personally. Otherwise, you might as well stick uh, to SPY buy and hold. So in this situation, we, we have a compounding annual uh, rate of return of 7%. So I'm just gonna do seven uh, divided by 36, and it's still not significant enough. It's 0 0.194. So there's lots of improvements we need to do in the standard wine -time strategy. And that could be from the perspective of what kind of inputs we're gonna give, uh, what kind of exits, what kind of entries we can keep on changing it. So let me go through some of the course results. Uh, so I think if I can go to yeah here. So this is one of our portfolio based strategies. Again, this one has got 12% compound uh, annual return. This is on a course 12 and a drawdown at 26. So if I can go into that one to so 12 divided by 26, that will give us 0.46, which is substantially higher than 0.19. So here's another strategy uh, here at Q7, which is just 7 and 27. You might think it's low, but in reality, if you actually do 7 divided by 27, the risk adjust return is 0.25, again, superior. Um, let's do the Q8. Again, 8 divided by 25, the CHGI to drawdown ratio. Um, again, 0.32. Um, there's another one which is a Q3 strategy, which is again um, on SPY, it's a mean reverting strategy. So this one will be 9 divided by 20, which is again equal to 0.45. So again, we are beating the uh, SPY CAGR to drawdown ratio. So why is this important? So let's say uh, there's a genuine question you can ask. Hey, I'm, you're only making 9% return, but 20% drawdown. You've beaten the drawdowns in the SP1 buy and hold. Why should we do this strategy? So this is without any leverage. So imagine you're doing a small, tiny bit of leverage. To it. So let's say you're doing a 1.5 leverage. I'm not saying 10 leverage or 20 leverage, 30 leverage, just a 1.5 is leverage to a CAGR. So that'll be nine into uh, 1.5, which is roughly 13.5. And the drawdown also increases at 20 into 1.5, uh, which is equal to 30. So you've actually made 13% uh, CAGR with 30% drawdown. However, in the SPY, your returns is lower. It's only 10%, but the drawdown is like 50% plus. Uh, so the more you can minimize the drawdown and can increase the compound annual return, the more leverage you can apply and improve your results. So this is just an individual strategy. So there's also back testing by combining strategies. So you can combine Q3, Q7, like, like five, eight, 10 strategies or whatever. And then once you do that, um, the back test will give a completely different because the drawdowns get much lower because now you're testing uh, multiple strategies. So on top of these, you have to perform forward testing in Monte Carlo simulation. And that is also very crucial before you go ahead with any of the strategies. So for example, this one here, 12 and 36, 
uh, this one if I uh, have a leverage of 1.5 I get 18% CAGR as compared to 10% CAGR and the drawdowns will also be uh, minimal as well so it'll be 1.5 and that will be 39% drawdown. So you can see uh, how quickly you can improve your returns by assessing um, CAGR and drawdowns and creating efficient strategies. So if I can go go up to these uh, these strategies, again, the fees is included. You can see how it performed over the years. And again, uh, Q7 as well. Again, the fees is included. Q3, again, the fees is included. Q3 is mean inverting, so we're getting in and out multiple times. So you can see the high amount of fees. And even with the high amount of fees, uh, the returns are pretty good. Again, Q8 is again a higher amount of fees. It's also a mean reverting strategy. Um, again, a higher amount of fees, and still we are beating the CAGR to drawdown ratio. However, for the standard Einstein strategy, we are not beating the CAGR to drawdown ratio. So I wouldn't recommend using the standard Weinstein strategy. So, anyways, the code for the standard Weinstein strategy for the Quant Connect for the portfolio backtest is available for all our students in the Prometheus course. If you want to download this and try making some changes because there is lots of alpha in it, you can optimize some of the values, you can um, you can change some of the inputs and exits. But remember, once you do the optimization, make sure you do the forward testing uh, and also do the Monte Carlo simulation before you go ahead with your uh, strategies. And the advantage of Quant Connect is that if you want to go live, you can just go, you can just go straight into live trading and just put in your uh, username and password you know if you, if you want to strike paper trading you can do that if you're doing interactive brokers you've got um you've got to just to put the username and password and then you are ready to go uh with the strategy and that's a beautiful thing about quant connect it pretty much takes care of all the execution sites so if you want to know completely about uh, how quant connect works then i've done a full tutorial video if you don't know anything about python coding which quant connect is uh, primarily involved in then I would ask you to go visit our YouTube channel there is an algorithmic trading in Python video let me just uh, see if you can get it so there's the algorithmic trading quant connect video and then there is also the Python video should be somewhere here uh, yeah algorithmic trading zero to here in Python I'm also about to release uh, a newer version which does it in Google Colab as well pretty soon so uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you got any questions, feel free to uh, put in the comments and I'll answer as quickly as possible. Have a great day. Bye-bye.